Um, just a very brief uh, overview of uh, the Industry Research and Development Group. Uh, as I said, I'd like to introduce myself. Dennis Hayes is my name. I've, I'm the Managing Director of the Industry Research and Development Group since the 1st of December last year. And prior to that, I, I have worked in industry for many, many years. I won't say how many, but um, that, that's where I've spent my life. Uh, having said that, uh, IRDG has been around since 1992, so we're now celebrating our 20th uh, birthday. Um, and IRDG is an industry-led, independent, non-profit body, um, and it's membership-based. So companies and third-level colleges join the uh, network or the IRDG network, and there is an annual fee for it. Um, all our members are R&D performers, and we are cross-sectoral. So. We have everything from pharmacam to food to engineering uh, to medical devices, software companies uh, are involved. And we have all sectors and sizes. So we have some very, very large companies. I'll give you a, a quick flavor of, of, of who the membership, uh, of who's in the membership shortly. But we have startups, and on the other end, we have, have multinationals and everything in between. And we're probably about 50-50. Irish-owned and multinational in terms of, of, of the profile of companies. So we see ourselves as being a, a, a unique voice for industry R&D, and we're also a network for industry R&D. Um, just a very quick um, flash, if you wish, of the type of companies. Um, and as I said, they're all R&D performing companies, but also we have in there uh, now seven of the uh, third-level colleges as part of the... Uh, IRDG network. Um, and what do we do? Uh, what services do we provide for our members? And basically we operate under five pillars of activity. Uh, we are, are a representative group, as I said, the voice of R&D for, for, for industry. Um, we provide support to our members on funding uh, options, whether that's Enterprise Ireland, Europe, IDA, SFI, wherever we advise our members tax credits wherever our members can access funding for R&D. And there is quite an array of supports out there, which is to the credit of the state and the European Union. Um, a lot of the time, companies find it difficult to identify what exactly is appropriate for them. Um, innovation networking, and obviously we're very thankful for the support of Enterprise Ireland over the last uh, three years um, to help us grow our innovation network, and we've done that. And over the last uh, six to nine months, we've uh, got 30 new members coming in um, to, to the organization. Um, collaboration today is a very good um, example of, of, of the collaboration uh, effort. Uh, and finally, learning. But I just quickly, representation. Some of you old enough, like myself, might remember that little uh, a cameo from uh, 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 Yesminster, um, but we do we do try and influence on behalf of industry R and D. We try and influence policy uh, and feedback to the powers that be what issues and what opportunities there are in industry. So we talk to F Department of Finance, to Revenue, Enterprise Ireland, IDA, SFI, and sometimes politicians, um, and on all these issues uh, relating to R and D. Funding and support, I've talked about it, touched on tax credits, huge. It's a, a, a fantastic um, program, uh, helps companies from the smallest to the largest and scales accordingly. But again, there are pitfalls and issues there for people to, um, to, to, be, to be aware of. Um, so funding and support is, is, a, is a major uh, activity. Uh, we spend most of our time probably on that. Uh, innovation networking. I think Greg mentioned we have in this country a tremendous opportunity. We have the multinationals, uh, foreign direct investment, we have indigenous companies, we have startups, we have our traditional companies. We have a tremendous infrastructure of companies in this country, much different to the 1980s. And many of those are doing R&D, and there's a great opportunity for those to network and feed off each other and leverage um, each other's capability. Um, and we facilitate that through networking. Uh, collaboration, it's part of our mission to facilitate collaboration between our member companies, third level colleges and other member companies. Uh, and that's very important and as I said, we do that through direct contact, through events, um, through our newsletter, uh, through our closed LinkedIn group, um, 
and um, you know, as I said, we have seven of the universities now actually joining, becoming members. Uh, finally, learning, and if you wish, that's what I call continuous improvement for those involved in R&D and innovation. A lot of people, um, you know, go about their uh, innovation, manage their innovation in a particular way, but are they using best practice? So again, peer-to-peer -peer learning, getting expert speakers on, learning from um, who are the best out there, we facilitate that. So we run things like innovation practice groups where we bring our uh, members to particular member companies. We were in Microsoft recently. They hosted an afternoon. We had their innovation director for Europe talking to uh, 25 of our members about innovation, the innovation practice within Microsoft. Um, two weeks' time, we'd be down in Medtronic in Galway doing the same thing, and so on. So I'm conscious of time. Um, anyone here who's not a member, we'd like you to become a member, but we're out there looking for, for, uh, to grow the network. Um, and we have a number of events. Uh, two weeks ago, we were in Cork at a tax credit event, and we had revenue speaking there. We're here today at the Collaborate to Innovate, and in, uh, at the end of November, we'll have a seminar on intellectual property um, um, here in Dublin.